Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I hope you had an awesome Friday. I did. I got a lot accomplished. Well, I haven't been here for a while. I don't have any really good excuses. Last night, my phone wanted to die. And if it dies, then... Um, If it dies, it dies, and it will end my live stream on Facebook. But the one on YouTube will continue. Okay, well, I want to, um, I have not been on here since the 15th. I kind of wanted to explain. I don't know what happened on the 16th. <laughs> on the 17th. We had a, a harvest festival at our church on Sunday night. So that was fun. So I wasn't here then. Monday, um, I was doing something that I needed to do during this time. Tuesday, I don't know. Wednesday, I was at youth. Thursday, like I said, my phone died last night. So... I guess those are my excuses. Probably not very good excuses, but anyway, it is what it is. Um, my phone just like died last night, so I really need to probably get some things off of it so that it will start keeping a charge better. All right, well, we are going to do Psalm 33 tonight. And I was going to share, I don't think I'm going to do that. Actually, I was going to share something else and I left it over there. I may go get it in a minute. Anyway, I wanted to share with you my devotional today. It was really good. The one on uh, Jesus all in Jesus always. It was really good. It was one of the verses was, be still and know that I am God. And some of the other verses just really, really hit me. So, so much going on in our country and all around the world. So many people need prayer right now. Um, just a lot, just a lot going on. I was listening to some stuff a while ago about Alec Baldwin and how um, one of his directors got shot and killed accidentally with a, with a, um, a blank gun. It was just really weird. You know, you don't hear of that and you hear of car accidents and stuff, but you don't hear, you don't hear of that. So that was kind of weird. And, um, just some other weird things that are going on. Just need a lot of prayer. That volcano in La, La Palma is or La Palma is still erupting. And I listened to this guy that lives there, and he said that they had 165 earthquakes in like a 24-hour period. And so as long as they're having those earthquakes, that volcano is going to keep erupting. It's just so sad. So many people have lost their homes. So many people have been evacuated uh, because they were in the path. So anyway, we need to pray for them. We need to pray for what's going on with the vaccine mandate that has impacted a lot of people. A lot of people are going to lose their jobs. Um, I don't understand how we're trying to keep people working, but yet we're firing people because they choose to do something that they don't think is good for their health. It makes no sense. A lot of this makes absolutely no sense. So we need to pray about those things. And I'll be right back. I'm going to get this thing that I was going to read. I'll be right back.
cat wants my chair. She, uh, she finds her, she doesn't always have the same place that she wants to sleep, so she kind of moves around from place to place, and she wants my chair. Like, I let her sleep in it the other night, and now she thinks it's hers to sleep in. I got up, I hurt my knee. Hmm, that's painful. Okay, so I got it. We'll read it. Right now, we're going to pray. God, we just come to you and we just thank you. We thank you for all that you are and for all the many things that you do, God. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are our shelter, God. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our strength and our refuge. God, you are mighty and powerful and magnificent and you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness, not, not based on what we think the truth is, but based on your truth. And uh, we just, we know that you are kind and compassionate and loving. So you are faithful and trustworthy. And we know that you're patient and you want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears and their heart to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We also pray for the prodigals, God. We pray for them to come back. To you, we pray for them to remember the relationship that they had with you and to return, to repent, and to be reconciled, God. God, we lift up all the people that are where this volcano eruption is, God. We just pray that you would be with them, that you would meet their needs, that you would be with um, the man that I listen to every day to see how things are going, God, that you would be with him and his family, that you would protect him, that you would protect his family, that you would protect others too, God, that you would meet their needs with the hands and feet of Jesus, that there would be a way for them to escape. God, we pray for all the other disasters that are going on. There are just so many so many to pray individually for God because there's just constantly something happening. So we just pray that you would be with these people too, God. And we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones, God. There are so many of those too. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. We pray for the parents that are standing up for their children, for what is right for their children, God. We just pray that their voices would be heard. We pray for all the corruption in our government and all over the world, God. We just pray for it to be eradicated, for the, the light of the truth to shine upon it, God, for it to be seen for what it is. God, we pray for all these people that their jobs are on the line right now. I listened to someone on the radio today that if she doesn't get a vaccine by December the 8th, she's going to lose her job. God, this just is not right. It's not right. And God, I pray that many will stand up to truth, that many will stand up against this. This is tyranny. This is communism. This is not freedom. And freedom is not a joke. Freedom is a serious thing. Because you give us freedom, God. Man should not be taking our freedoms away. God, we just praise you and thank you. And uh, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Well, let's read Psalm 33. Let's see what Psalm 33 has to say to us. There are so many things going on, many things that we don't understand. Yeah. Joy. Hmm. Okay, so this is what Psalm 33 says. 
important. It says the sovereignty of the Lord in creation and history. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make melody to him with an instrument of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. Woke up yesterday with that song, I Choose Joy, on my mind. But I never did share it because I got busy and I never did do it. For the word of the Lord is right and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the people of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. That is a great scripture. I have a t-shirt that says that, and so does Seth. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We need that so badly in our nation again. We need God to be Lord over our nation again. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. So well, not scary fear, but a reverent fear. Like we know what God is capable of doing. We know the power. We know the strength. We know the might. We know the miraculous. We know all the things about God. And we fear him for who he is. Not that we're afraid, scary, scary afraid. On those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield, for our heart shall rejoice in him. Because we have trusted in his holy name, let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. So that was, wow, that was an awesome, awesome psalm that was it was long as far as psalms go but it had so many good things about it talking about um the people being righteous talking about praise talking about the word of the lord is right it is truth um that he loves righteousness and judge justice That he made the heavens. That he um, he breathed the heavens. You know, and how powerful he is. And, and how in control of everything he is. And he brings counsel to the nations. Um, to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. I mean, we can plan and we can plan and we can plan. And if it's and if you're God's and God's not in it, then it's not going to happen. 
And if you're God's and it doesn't glorify God, then it's probably not going to happen. So he knows all of our hearts. It says he fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. He wants us to fear him reverently. And he wants us to trust him. So let's see what my study Bible says. It says this hymn of praise. This was a hymn of praise. Celebrates the greatness of the Lord as creator. Um, Psalms 32 and 33 were once linked. The expression new song may designate the freshness that should always characterize our worship. God spoke and his word came to pass. A good example of synonymous parallelism occurs in verse 8. The second line of this verse re repeats the thought of the first line in slightly different words. The sphere in the first line corresponds to stand in awe. In the second line, fear of the Lord is reverence of him that leads to obedience. That's right. We reverence God. We reverence him. Okay. Sorry, my nose itches. It kind of goes with what I read today. October 22nd. It was really good. October 22nd. Jesus Always by Sarah Young. This is not my book. I did not write it. But I love this book. And I'm so happy to read it every day. I read it every day. Even on Sundays, if I get up early enough, I do my quiet time before I go. Don't be afraid to tell me how weak and weary, even overwhelmed you feel at times. I am fully aware of the depth and breadth of your difficulties. Nothing is hidden from me. So if you think that God does not care about the smallest thing that you're going through to the biggest thing, he does. He cares about it all. Although I know everything, I wait to hear from you. He wants us to come to him. Pour out your heart to me, for I am your refuge. There can be a peaceful intimacy in sharing your struggles with me. You let down your guard and your pretense. You get real with me and with yourself. And then you rest in the safety of my presence, trusting that I understand you perfectly and love you with an everlasting love. Relax deeply with me. Release yourself from striving to perform. Be still, letting my presence refresh and renew you. When you are ready, ask me to show you the way forward. Remember, I, nev I never leave your side. I'm holding you by your right hand. This gives you courage and confidence to continue your journey as you go along your path. Hear me saying, do not fear, I will help you. So that was just so refreshing because I woke up a little bit sad because um, I've, been, I've been following this um, true life crime case. And I got really caught up in it. And God reminded me that I don't need to know all the details because he does. And so today, I haven't done that. Today, I have tried to get some stuff done around my house. Around my house and get some errands ran. And I've been quite successful today. So that just shows me that I don't need to take in all of that all the time. I don't need to focus on that. I need to focus on the things that I need to be doing. And so I did that. I made me a list today. I worked my list. I'm going to start making me a list every day because that has always helped me, especially when I work, when I have a lot of things that I need to get accomplished in one day. 
always make a list and check off my list. But it also helps me in my everyday life too, to get the things done that I know I need to get done. Because if I don't have a list, then either I forget or I go, oh, I can do that tomorrow. But if I have a list, then I work my list and I do really well like that. I don't know if any of you are like that or not, but that's, that is me and that's how I work best. Okay, so we read Psalm 33 and we discussed it a little bit. And if you have any comments about Psalm 33, then please put them in the comments. Okay. All right. How do we want to do our salvation message? I think we shall do it like this. We shall do it like this tonight. So. Oh. There's, there's Spanish on one side. We shall do the English side because I can't pronounce all the words in Spanish. Although, I can read these and I know, I know a lot of these words. But I can't pronounce them the way that they need to be pronounced. So we'll do English. This is the English side. Okay. And this is... E band, E3 band, or E3 resources. Okay, so we have the gold color. First of all, we have a scripture. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Like the salvation that Jesus has to offer is for everyone, there is no one that is excluded. But God gives us free will, and he lets us choose. The gold color represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you, and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. So let's move to the next one, the dark with the white question mark. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. So, sorry. Now, the first mark, the first mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? All right, I'm going to lean back a little bit. That's one reason why I brought this chair in here, because it's very comfy. I have to cover it up, though, because my cat's ruined it. The red color represents Jesus's blood. And Jesus lived a perfect and sinful life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, for God, excuse me, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So now we have the white with the red question mark. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So this question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus? Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him. Now my eye itches.
And so if the answer is no, then repeat this prayer after me. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, well, on, on to the next color, which is green. The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. So we have these symbols here. We have the heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that we love our neighbor as ourselves. Love God. Love people. The next one is the Bible. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. The next one is the little praying man. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with him. The next one is the water. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And then you have the fellowship hands. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. I agree with that. I love my church family. Share the good news that Jesus has can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. We need to share the good news of Jesus. So if you did accept Jesus as your Savior tonight, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the angels are rejoicing. They are having a party in heaven because you have been added to the kingdom. So like this uh, information said, read your Bible every day. Pray. Find some praise music and praise. I used to listen to praise music, but I keep forgetting. I have another phone and I keep forgetting to bring it in here. Anyway, sometimes I have a song playing in my head. Sometimes I don't need actual music. All right. Well, it is time for me to give you God's blessing and to get off of here. I already ate dinner, but I need to attend to my child's dinner. Okay, so in Numbers 6, 24 through 26, it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So I hope that you find love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I hope that you are able to walk in that. It is really hard. but That's the fruits of the Spirit. And that is what we're supposed to walk in. I just lost my necklace here. I'm just going to clip it back on. That is what we're supposed to walk in, is the fruits of the Spirit. And it is challenging at times, because we live in a broken and fallen world. And it is full of all kinds of challenges. 
So I'm going to pray and I'm going to get off of here. And I'm sorry I was five minutes late. I'm going to try to start keeping these to 30 minutes. I think that more people watch them when they're 30 minutes. And um, it gives me a little bit more time too at night. Okay, well, let's pray. God, we just come to you and we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for all the things that you are in the Bible and everything that you are to us, God. We just pray that you would give us protection, that you would provide for us and bless us and our families and anyone that comes here, God. I just pray that you would bless their family abundantly, that you would provide, protect, and bless them also, and that you would help us, that you would guide us, God. You would give us boldness so that we can share your truth and the gospel of Jesus. And God, we just pray that many, many would come to know Jesus as their Savior. And we just pray that you would use us in any way that you want to, to further your kingdom. And uh, we just praise you, God. We bring you all the glory, honor, and praise that you deserve. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my pray and share warriors. I have got to get off of here. I will try to be here tomorrow night. I don't know about Sunday. If I start going to church on Sunday nights again, then I probably won't be here on Sundays. But I'll try to be here every other night. Except Wednesday and Sunday, I'll try to be more consistent. Even if I just jump on here and share this. Is this, this is worth it. And God shared something with me today. And he said, one is worth the sacrifice. So whatever we do for God's kingdom, if it invites one person in, then it's worth the sacrifice of doing it. That's kind of what I took from that. One is worth the sacrifice. So keep sharing. Keep being in the hands and feet of Jesus. Have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow, which is Saturday. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. Maybe sleeping in. That would be good. Uh, much love. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.